of the communion of saints. Um, we in our creed every Sunday pray, we believe in the communion of saints. And I think a lot of times we may fail to comprehend fully what that means. Perhaps uh, people think initially, well, that means the saints in heaven, the communion of the saints in heaven. But the communion of saints refers to all of us baptized in Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit abiding in us. The communion of saints is really um, uh, a communion that is held together, if you will, by the Holy Spirit. Father Daniel Horan, who is a systematic theologian uh, and also and teaches spirituality at Chicago Theological Union, points out that the Second Vatican Council spoke eloquently of the communion of saints. The council said, all the faithful, scattered though they may be throughout the world, are in communion with each other in the Holy Spirit. So one of the gifts of the Spirit is to hold us all in communion. We are one with each other in the Holy Spirit. I think sometimes we might be Holy Spirit atheists. We don't really refer much to the Holy Spirit. We say that in the sign of the cross, but the Holy Spirit is God. God is holding us together. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in Jesus Christ, called by the Father. We're united with each other always, wherever and whenever. We're always one with each other, even beyond death. So the live streaming is nice. It's a good thing we can do it, I'm glad. But even without it, we are one in this beautiful sacrament of the Eucharist because we are one in the Holy Spirit. And of course, also by socially distancing ourselves, we're also underscoring our solidarity, our communion. By being socially distant, we're expressing our care for one another, that we want to protect each other, that we don't want anyone to get sick. And finally, the Holy Spirit reminds us that the communion of saints means we're in communion with all that is holy. Sometimes we tend to limit what is holy. But remember, we read in Genesis, God saw all that he created and saw that it was good. Pope Francis reminds us in Laudato Si that God's creation is good and holy. And so we are in communion with all that is holy, not simply those things that were obviously holy and which we cherish, of course, but so much is holy and perhaps in this time of of uh, socially distancing ourselves and of sheltering in place, um, it will remind us of all the ways in which God's holiness comes to us in the communion of saints. I say these things to, to remind you and to remind me that we are one. And even though I am standing here in front of an empty cathedral, we're still one with each other in the Holy Spirit and through the communion of saints. And so I welcome you all as we begin these sacred mysteries. But first, I'd like Father Martinez to give us some announcements uh, as pastor and rector of the Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis. Muy buenos dias, les de Dios. Good morning. I would like to um, just remind you um, briefly that the importance of, the, of us as a parish we are a people who gather regularly, and we are people who are very deeply concerned for one another. As a parish, we continue to have needs, we continue to have um, opportunities during this difficult time. Our care for one another is expressed in our prayers, but it's also still expressed in the ways that we support the material part of our parish. Um, if you are a regular giver to our parish, I would strongly um, ask you, beg of you, please, to continue to give. It's important for us to continue because our needs continue. Our financial needs, the, the needs of, of the people who work here, the needs of, of um, the, the building that we have, but our needs to be of service in prayer to one another are also there. So I'm encouraging you to go to our website if, if you can, if you can give financially um, to cbsfa.org, the Cathedral Basilica of St. Francis of Assisi. And you'll see a link on there that says you'd like the, to donate. 
click that link and you may make a one-time donation. Or if you're a regular giver, you can set up regular giving through that website. Your help would be greatly appreciated. Greatly appreciated also will be your prayers and your spiritual connection and communion with all of us today. I'd also like to remind you that the intentions for today's service for Monica Augustine, for Jacob Brito, for Libby Lucero, for Mercy Royval, Martha and Manuel Montoya, Jesus Lopez, Loretta Funk, Pat and Celine Vigil, Beatrice R. Garcia, Daniel Wright, for the departed souls and for all the people of the parish. And I'm offering this Mass uh, pro popolo for the people of the Archdiocese of Santa Fe, as I always do on Sunday. And so then, let us begin, as we do all things holy, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Throughout the Mass, we will have some recorded music today to help us to enter into the liturgy and to create a prayerful atmosphere for us. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the pro book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them. 
O oh, my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies as, as well through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a man was ill, Lazarus from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death, while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So when Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, 
God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Take away the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But I have said this because of the crowd here, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The uh, one of the um, one of my favorite popes was. Saint Pope John the Twenty Third. I can still remember as a young boy, fascinated by this wonderful Pope, his friendliness and his humor. Um, they asked him one time how many people worked in the Vatican, and he responded, "Oh, about half of them." And uh, that was just the way he was. He was very quick. Uh, one time he went to see the, I think it was the, the Order of Nuns. I don't have all the details now; it's a dim memory, but. There was the uh, sister who was in charge of this hospital of the Holy Spirit, and she got so flustered when the Pope came. Oh, she said, hello, I'm the mother of the Holy Spirit. And he said, oh, you're lucky. I'm only the vicar of Christ. So he had this very mm, quick wit and a very homespun way about him. One day, um, he was giving a homily in one of the stational churches in Rome, and he happened to see a funeral cortege pass by. And he stopped his homily 
And he kind of got in a reverie. And then he just said, kind of to the people and kind of to himself, every day is a good day to be born and every day is a good day to die. For the person of faith, they're just different aspects of the same mystery of life. How did the Pope come to that? It was no doubt a development of faith, the coming of faith in his own life, from a young boy to an adulthood, to believe in Jesus Christ, the same way that Mary believed in Jesus in today's gospel. St. John the Evangelist is really quite a dramatist. If you take the entirety of his gospel, we see that he has built into it this incredible drama, this suspense. Jairus' daughter, remember, was raised to life by Jesus when she had been dead just a few moments. So John's reader takes that in. Then later on in John's gospel, the widow of Nain's son is raised from the dead. He had been dead for about 24 hours. And notice that John tells us very specifically, Lazarus had been dead for four days. A few moments, 24 hours, four days. The reader almost unconsciously says, wow, what's next? Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is next. John is telling his readers that yes, the Lord went back where he knew it was dangerous because he is the Lord of life. And this is the point of Lent, that realization of our unity through baptism, the communion of saints I talked about in the beginning with Jesus Christ, the risen one. He is our pledge of eternal life. Notice in both the first and second readings, we see that God instills his spirit in us. Yahweh says, I will instill my spirit in you. And Paul says that the spirit of Jesus Christ is living in you. You have Jesus in you. You have life, life eternal. And so this is what we reflect on in Lent as we prepare to renew our baptismal promises. That in Jesus Christ, by being united in his death and resurrection through baptism, that we have eternal life that Christ's supreme act of love on the cross ushers us into eternal life. This is a critical point of the John's gospel. God will never abandon us. He's one with us always. I know that during these days as we respond to the pandemic of COVID-19, all of us, to some degree or another, I'm sure, feel the sense of isolation, of fear, uncertainty, the unknown. And we're living in a very different time. And it conjures up in us all kinds of emotions. It triggers um, things from our past, fears from our past that we thought we had successfully uh, processed and taken care of. But we realize all too well that we are nonetheless now very much vulnerable we feel very vulnerable. And that's why it's so important for us to recall this gospel. Jesus is with us. He says to Mary, do you believe? And this gospel here, Martha is to ask the question. She says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would never have died. She was really saying to Jesus, where were you? I thought you were our friend. Thanks for coming now, but you're late. It's too late. But see, Jesus in his response is telling her, you're asking the wrong questions. I'm not a miracle worker. I wasn't sent here just to only to bring uh, people healing or bring them back from the dead. Those are wonderful works, yes. But even those works, as wonderful as they are, they pale in the face of who I really am, the Messiah. I am the Messiah. Jesus came to bring eternal life, and that's why he says, do you believe that I am the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that? And so Jesus is not answering Martha's question. She, he's giving the real question and the answer. I am the Lord of life. I am there for you. 
I will never ever abandon you. This is the good news that we long to hear. This is the good news that we are not abandoned. From our very earliest moments of life, that is our primordial, basic, archetypal fear that we've been abandoned. We don't want to be abandoned. We want to be assured that we're loved. And that's why it's such a tender thing for mother and father to embrace their newborn, to enwrap them, envelop them in arms of love and comfort and nourishment and sustenance. And this is precisely what Jesus does for us. Only Jesus does it for all eternity. Now, and for all eternity. It is very obvious that we could very easily fall into despair even for some, to be filled with a, a hopelessness. What am I going to do with all of this disease and pandemic out throughout the whole world? It's changed our lives and turned them upside down. And that's why, like Martha and Mary, we turn to the Lord. He is our life, our resurrection, he is with us, and he will not abandon us. I often quote here in the cathedral that National Geographic uh, photographer who takes great pictures as he says, because I first believe. Most people say, I'll believe it when I see it, but I say, I see it because I believe it. It's, it's his faith that allows him to perceive reality as it really is and to capture that in film, I guess today, digitally, we'd say. It is our faith that allows us to see reality as it really is, that Jesus is the Lord of life, and that nothing can separate us from his love and his compassion. As Paul tells us, neither life nor death, no angel or prince, nothing exists, nothing still to come, not any power or height or depth nor any created thing can ever come between us and the love of God made visible in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Not the coronavirus, not uh, death, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And there's another point to this too. Notice that Jesus reaches out to Martha and Mary. Jesus wept for his friend Lazarus. He wept. Jesus is compassionate. He is with us. He's just in, our, in our every moment, especially in our fears. And he calls you and me to do the same. Jesus is calling you and me to be that compassionate presence that he is for all of us. He calls us to reach out to one another. We can't do it in the ways we'd like. We can't go visit our elderly parents. We can't go to the hospital. We can't do so much that we're used to doing. But we're still connected, as I mentioned at the beginning of Mass, as the communion of saints. And we can still pick up the phone and call people and send them a text message. We can let them know that we care, that we love them. We can drop things off on the porch. We can do so much. We can pray for the nurses and the doctors and the caregivers and the res first responders and those who are, and the delivery persons and those who are selling us our groceries and keeping so many vital, essential necessities for us. We can pray for them and we can remind them that we're grateful as we keep our distance. There's so much that we can do to connect, even though we can't do so in the ways we were accustomed to. This is how we become that compassionate presence of Christ. As Catholics, we know that we don't simply uh, receive from Christ, but we go forth from the Mass to live what we've celebrated and to be the body of Christ, to be the compassion of Christ, the love of Christ, the healing of Christ for one another. And so as we continue with our Eucharistic celebration, let us remember that we're on a journey, that our journey of life, that we need to ask the deeper questions, that we need to remind ourselves and others that God is with us and to realize that the Lord will never abandon us and that we see and hear and perceive his presence because we believe in him. We acknowledge, yes, Jesus, you are the truth, you are the life, you are the resurrection.
Now together, let us pray our uh, a creed, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is, and who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the life-giving power of the Holy Spirit, who unites us as one people, we now lift up our prayers and petitions to our Father in heaven. We pray today that all leaders and members of the church may be graced with the guidance and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, we pray that those who are in mourning, especially those who have lost loved ones through the COVID-19 pandemic, might be consoled by God in their grief, as were Martha and Mary, and made confident in the hope of the resurrection for their loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the members of this faith community and beyond may receive the mercy of God for themselves and that God will watch over all of us during this pandemic and keep us safe and keep us healthy and that God will also protect in a special way our doctors and nurses, our first responders, caregivers, all those who are in any way working to help us, especially those performing essential services. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that our beloved dead and all those who have died from this parish may know the joy and fullness of life in heaven. And we pray especially for those that Father Martinez mentioned at the beginning of Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. We pray for all of our civil leaders and all of our do those uh, researchers and those who are leading us and giving us uh, sound advice. For all of them and their stamina and well-being, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pause now to remember any special intentions we'd like to include in this liturgy, and so we take a moment now to, to call those to mind. For all of these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we turn to you this day in our need as we seek your deliverance from the pestilence of illness and disease. We pray, Lord, for all humanity as we raise our voices in supplication. We ask you not to abandon us, but to be with us as you sent your son Jesus, who is the Lord of life. May we deepen in our faith in that same Lord Jesus, as did Martha and Mary. And may we see in him our true life and our only salvation. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God, raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, 
on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son. And grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, prompted by the Lord and by his divine commandment, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the same peace then of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Now we pray that that peace of Christ will be with the communion of saints always. Peace, peace of Christ. Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
And now I'll offer for those of you who are participating through the live streaming, a, a spiritual communion prayer. And you can just join me in this prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Before the final blessing, I just want to remind you all that the Archdiocese of Santa Fe continues to reach out to all members, all parishioners, to all people uh, in our own faith and beyond seeking to help, to comfort, to pray, and to console. Um, the, please do your best to keep um, alert to the various announcements you'll find on our web pages, Facebook, and the um, home pages of your parishes, the Archdiocesan homepage, Cathedral, Basilica, St. Francis homepage, and all the parish homepages and schools. Our schools are being conducted via the Zoom and other digital means. So the teachers are still teaching and the students are still learning. Although I suspect that the possibility of some little minor chit chat is perhaps heightened a bit, but nonetheless, I'm sure our fine students are doing their best as well. Uh, I want to remind you too that I know this is a sacred and beautiful tradition in our archdiocese to have pilgrimages and particularly during Holy Week but I want you to, and our vocation pilgrimage, but I want you to remember that all pilgrimages have been canceled. Uh, Chimayo, uh, Tome Hill, and any other pilgrimages are canceled for the safety of our people, of all those who would participate, also for the safety of the uh, civic personnel uh, that would have to be utilized to keep our people safe. They are needed in other capacities now. And so it's very important that we see this as a communal effort. As I said in the beginning of the communion of saints, to be joined with each other, to make a pilgrimage of faith. We can do, that's why we have the Stations of the Cross, so that we can symbolically walk with Jesus on the Via Dolorosa. And you could do the same thing from your home, is to spiritually pray, make the sign of the cross, ask for the Holy Spirit's guidance, and make the pilgrimage in faith. Uh, just envision yourself walking in faith, asking the Lord. You might envision different moments of your life, different times as you've grown in the Lord's love. Make that pilgrimage and then uh, say a prayer at the end. So these are the ways we do it. But the church at Chimayo uh, will be closed. It will be locked from the morning of Holy Thursday to Easter Monday morning. So it will not be open. So please be aware of that. The church will be keeping all of our churches open for individual prayer but um, for the, the triduum there, and because of the, of, the, of the hazard of too many people gathering, we're closing the church. Father Julio Gonzalez has closed the church from Holy Thursday morning until Easter Monday morning. So um, you need to be aware of that as well. Um, please uh, remember too that uh, to, we keep each other in prayer. Please, uh, if you do go to church for uh, individual prayer or for confession, follow the directions of your pastor and the associate pastor. Um, uh, keep the proper distance. Remember that if you're in a church, you're in a public space. So if you're making even a private prayer, you're going to be having to touch the pew or doorknobs. So the key is to wash your hands uh, during, right away, because as you settle in with some hand sanitizer, as you leave, wash your hands again. When you get home, use soap and water. One cannot emphasize enough the importance of washing hands and not touching your face and social distancing. These are our defenses. These are the rules. And if you follow the rules, the odds are 99.9% .9 you're going to be fine. You're going to be safe. If you don't follow the rules, then, then there's no saying what will happen. I know that our hands are 
are going to become the dermatologists. When this is all over, please God, the dermatologists are going to have a bonanza as they prescribe uh, ointments for our hands to come back to life again. But better that we, we do that now to wash them well. And, and this is a way of, I, I, again, I emphasize this again and again, I'm not just caring for myself, I'm caring for everybody. If I take care of myself, I'm taking care of you and everybody around you. So it's really a preventative. It's, it's a, something that we do. I met someone the other day and he said, oh, I don't worry about that stuff. If you get it, you get it. That's bad thinking. That's dangerous thinking. That's not true. It's not something you're just going to get. If we follow the rules, then the scientists, the doctors tell us that the, the odds are 99 plus in our percent in our favor. So these are practical uh, reminders. Remember, a great spiritual tenet is that grace builds on nature. So please, you know, be good to yourself, be good to the community. If I may. Just a reminder that we will be having confessions tomorrow. Um, the confessions will be from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 7 o'clock in the evening. There will be one priest available during that time, that entire time. They will be at the office of the cathedral, not in the church itself. Unfortunately, we can't, we don't have the facility to be able to do that safely here. Um, you're asked to not all arrive at one o'clock. Spread your times out during the day. Please plan to come at different times during the day. The less that we have people encountering one another, the better we'll be. There will be cones outside the, the office. You'll have to wait outside and the cones will be set six feet apart, so please stand by the cone and then walk closer to the door as the, next, as the penitent in front of you moves up. Again, very important to keep one another safe. It is an act of charity, it is an act of love to care for our brothers and sisters, especially when we're near each other. And one final announcement, Mr. Alan Sanchez, who is our state director of the New Mexico Council of Catholic Bishops, gave me a wonderful sound bite the other day, and that is that this Holy Week, home is the holy place. So we have home right in the middle. This Holy Week, home is the holy place. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.